Today in Asia Live, we talk about Singapore and Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur. Right now, human rights NGOs have organized a peaceful gathering to protest against amendments to the Prevention of Crimes Act that was proposed last week. Our correspondent in Singapore is Carrie Norton. Carrie, good morning. Thank you very much indeed for uh, joining us. Basically, what is controversial about this particular act is that it seems to remove all rights that a person might have to defend himself in court. Exactly. It will uh, it will authorize now authorities to throw somebody to jail without having a trial uh, previous to that. So right now, what's happening is like in the streets, in in front of the parliament, um, NGO supporters are trying to meet some MPs because these amendments are going to be discussed today. You have to know that for the last few days, uh, these amendments have caused a fierce debate among the Malaysian society. On one hand, uh, people are frightened because since June, uh, some vandalism is on the rise in the is in the streets of Singapore. But on the other hand, some people can't forget about the Internal Security Act, of which also authorized uh, throwing people to jail without, uh, pro uh, without trial. And that's what's frightening people as well. Carrie, uh, moving on to another story, of course, Singapore is an incredibly crowded and fairly small place, indeed the second densest nation in the world. And of course, looking for ways of replacing uh, traditional farming with innovative uh, technologies, vertical farming is uh, one that you've been having a look at. Well, basically, Sky Green is the first farm in the world to sell vegetables which have grown in the air, still in the soil, you'll see, on, literally on shelves. Uh, it's a method which saves space, um, water, energy, you'll see. And also, we have to know that Singapore imports 93% of its vegetables. So this method could help this country to uh, reduce a little bit its dependence on neighboring countries. I propose you to watch this report we've done with Aude Ruo. In Singapore, office buildings aren't the only things reaching for the sky. Vegetables are, too. These aluminium structures rotate, allowing the plants access to sunlight at the top and nutrients at the bottom. This vertical farming concept was invented by Jack Ng, a retired engineer. He sees it as the perfect answer to the challenges faced by urban farming communities, where both space and water are in short supply. This system is easier to fabricate and do the examining in like a Lego. Actually, we can easy to set up in a, on a rooftop. If you have a concrete base, it's easier to set up. It's an urban area system. Conditions in the greenhouses are carefully monitored. This means that vertical farming uses 10 times less soil than traditional farming methods. And that's not all. This 9 meter tower now, uh, occupied spacing is uh, 6 meters square. You need to 72 meters square to compare to our this uh, tower, one nine meter tower. So it means that you need to cover the 72 meters square. You just stand here, plant come to you. This will be less labor. Actually, it's 72, uh, 75 percent labor you can save it. Almost a ton of green vegetables is harvested every day, and consumer demand for sky green products is increasing. Sourcing produce locally means fresher vegetables. And as the method relies on comparatively simple distribution methods, it's much more environmentally friendly. To get from the farm to the store, six hours. So imagine that we import vegetable from uh, Malaysia. Easily, it will take you about 16 to 18 hours. Then from Thailand, it will take you maybe two days, 48 hours, and so and so forth. The farmer will, have not, will not have any wastages because whatever is being produced will be supplied to fair price and hopefully it's also versus the conventional way of grow the vegetable and waiting for buyer to come and buy. I think that result a lot of wastages. Locally sourced food is universally seen to be less affected by pollution. Here, it's China's pollution that causes concern. I try to avoid uh, made in China foodstuff, vegetables, etc. Uh, because there's an issue of trust. When I pick vegetables, I, I look at the appearance. Um, the colour, the, the fresh quality of it. I think it looks great. Can't wait to eat it. <laughs> Vertical farming may boast many advantages, but there's also a major drawback, the price. Vegetables grown this way cost twice as much as those from farms using traditional farming methods. That report by Carrie Norton, who's joining us live from Singapore. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. That was Asia Live. 
in less than a minute, Stuart Norr will be back with the latest international headlines. Do stay with us.